right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM joining you as usual from San Diego. Today I'm delighted to be joined by Colin Mitchell who is just up the coast in LA. How you doing, Colin? I'm doing awesome, man. Uh, I'm excited to get on here and, and talk about video and who knows, maybe some other things too. Um, I'll try to bring my professional podcast voice like you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not even Irish. It's all put on too, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> talk, but work, work good for the podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah. You could have yeah. fooled me. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Colin is the founder and chief revenue officer of SalesCast and also the host of Sales Transformation Podcast. And this is what we're going to start talking about today, and we'll see where the conversation goes, but selling with video, I mean, we're on video right now. People have been on Zoom for the last couple of years. Um, some of them forced onto it, especially sales. But it's kind of funny. I, I've come across salespeople who are phenomenal face to face. They go into a room full of people and they'll light it up. But you put a webcam in front of them, and suddenly they're like, "Ooh, yeah, this isn't. This is a little different." Yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's a different situation uh, selling into a camera, right? And then not being able to read body language or energy or vibe or all of these other things that humans typically um, rely on in a, you know, in-person interaction to kind of read the room or, you know, Hey, is this going well or not so well? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And all, of, and all of that goes obviously, well, it doesn't actually all go out the window, but they perceive it all goes out the window when you're stuck on, on a, uh, on a zoom call or, or even the, just the fact of using video. Cause I found this kind of, I don't know if you had the same experience, but I've found a lot of people when they were kind of forced onto zoom kind of had to switch on videos. They went through the experience and, and I'm sure I'm a lot older than you are. We went through the experience when we first heard our voices on tape or cassette tape recorders back in the day. And we were like, no, that's not me. That doesn't sound like me and everybody else going, yeah, it does. <laughs> Sorry mm. about that. And I think a lot of people had the same, especially salespeople had the same experience where they just were like, whoa, uh, I don't look like that. I don't sound like that. And they got kind of a little bit freaked out by the whole video experience. Yeah. I mean, especially, I mean, look, when the pandemic hit, right, everybody was kind of forced on Zoom. Like you said, everybody had to figure out this thing that everybody's calling virtual selling, um, right? It's just selling, but, you know, with a camera, like not, it, some things have changed, but not a lot has changed. Like, the, you know, the, how you sell is still, you still have the same frameworks, you still have the same process. Um, but, you know, the good news is, is if you were doing in person or door to door or whatever the case is, like, you can meet with more people in a day and not have to travel. Like there's a lot of upsides. Um, and video was not something that was totally new, but I think yeah. there was a lot of people that were reluctant to start using video. Right. And so we've been talking a little bit about like, okay, is using video on zoom to meet with your mm -hmm. prospects and things like that. It, pretty commonplace in say like a, you know, tech, tech sales. Yeah. Right. Um, but if we back it up a little bit, like people, uh, still are reluctant to use video just to prospect, right? Yep. Not even before Zoom, like before meeting somebody, like not even like me and you are having a conversation, mm -hmm. but just talking into a camera with nobody on the other end. Yeah, and, and that's a, and it's an interesting that's an interesting phenomenon because I mean obviously uh, you know video has been around for a long time. There's a lot of providers out there if you want to do video messaging. You know, there's a lot of services, and yet a lot of people uh, yet it's not it's to me, it just never seems that common. I, I common because I still notice when I get a a video message. Mm, yeah, exactly. That's it, it. Baffles me that just using video is still a way to stand out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. And I send a ton of videos. I mean, me and my team use videos all the time through all parts of the sales process from the very beginning all the way through to closing in many different ways. Um, and so, and we just do one take videos, like the best video, or the perfect video is the video that's not perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. So you get the authenticity and the realism coming through. And I think that's the other, and I think that's another part of why I think video is even more important than ever, because it seems like the pandemic reminded us of, of certain things. Uh, you know, people are looking for more authenticity. They're looking for people they can trust. All of the things that they may have looked for once upon a time, but maybe had gotten a f sort of 
pushed aside a little bit i think have come back in in bucket loads now and video is one way that you can actually start to shortcut that process yeah yeah absolutely and i mean it's a, just a great way to connect and put a face to the name and not just be you know um somebody that's just sending an email or just a, a message on, on LinkedIn. I actually ran an experiment on LinkedIn using video uh, for prospecting. Uh, it was, I don't remember, I think it was, yeah, I think it must've been about six plus ish months ago. Uh, mm -hmm. It was right when Vidyard uh, rolled out their integration with LinkedIn. Right. And it was right around the same time that everybody was freaking out because LinkedIn had changed how many invites you could send on a weekly basis uh, yeah. to really cut down on all the spam that people are sending. Right. Um, and everybody was freaking out and they're like, they didn't know what to do. You know, Hey, should I waste a connection request on you? Should I not? <laughs> and so Vid Vidyard rolled out this integration and I'm like, I'm just going to have fun with it. Um, LinkedIn is our number one lead source by far, uh, for what we do. And so we ran an experiment for, uh, for, for eight weeks. And so for four weeks, we sent a connection request with, uh, with no message, no personalization, just connection requests, which there's like, it depends on who you talk to. They'll say, don't ever do that. Or that's the way you should do it. Right. Um, and then the very first touch, we sent a video. Um, and so when we did it that way, we had a slightly lower acceptance rate, like only 55% of people actually accepted our connection request in the first place that we could actually then send a video to. Uh, but we booked way more meetings. We were booking three to five meetings a day just on my profile alone. And another you know, um, person on my team was booking a little bit under that. Uh, and then we ran that same experiment for an additional four weeks after where we sent a personalized message in the connection request. We got a slight lift, like 65% connected, um, but we booked like 50% less meetings just because the first touch wasn't video. They didn't feel right. the need to watch that video because they felt like they already got context in that original message. And there's so many people that will tell you never send a video on the first touch. And what I say is like, you got to have your own experience. There's all these gurus and, you know, LinkedIn famous people that tell you how to sell, but they don't know you, your personality, the people you're reaching out to, what, what you're saying on these. There's just way too many variables. You've got to test things in your environment and see what works. Yeah, I know a hundred percent. And I think that's, uh, it, there's a couple of things you highlighted there, but the last one I just wanted to focus on is you highlighted the danger of, as you say, following along with kind of trends and stuff. Or yeah. uh, you see, you see on LinkedIn and other things all the time, like you have blank is dead, like put in the, yeah. fill it in, like video is dead, or Cohen is dead, yeah. this is dead. And and yeah. you're right, I mean, some things work better for, I mean, some things may work really well for you. Something really old fashioned and traditional might be the best thing for your for for your particular market. Right, yeah, no, exactly. I, it's, I'm laughing because uh, a friend of mine, Ryan Reiser, you know, he's, we have this, there's it, me and him and a bunch of other people that are always just say, oh, cold calling is dead, right? Because that's what everybody says. Um, but it's this phone is still actually the most powerful tool in booking meetings across everything. I mean, social and email, in, in my opinion, are really just to warm up. Those are channels to warm up so that when you call on the phone, it's a much warmer conversation and you have a higher likelihood of booking. But yeah, who you're reaching out to. I mean, I've seen somebody say, personalized videos don't work. Right. And it's like, okay, well, how many did you send 30? And it took forever to send every single one of those. And I was like, well, 30 is not really a good enough number to say video doesn't work. Like, was your targeting good? Did your messaging suck? Like, there's just so many variables to say, to decide whether like it works or not for you. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think people give up too quickly or they're, I think part of it, to be honest, I think part of it is we live in this shortcut culture today. We live in this world where if something doesn't happen instantaneously, if I don't get instant results, well, then it's, then it's the, it's whatever <laughs> I'm using is crap, right? It's nothing to do with me or to do with, I didn't give it enough time or I didn't A-B test properly or whatever. It's just the solution's crap. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you know, it's, it doesn't, it doesn't take a lot of time to use to do video. If the thing is, is the more often you use video, I keep going back to like as in prospecting, right. But yeah. the more often you use video, the better you get at it. And then it becomes 
almost easier than typing a message. I mean, I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm not a fast typer. You know, I, I'm not. And so it's actually a lot quicker for me to just, you know, hit, hit a button and go for 30 seconds and then click and send it. And it's going to be much more impactful uh, to the person receiving it. No, absolutely. The other thing that you mentioned that I wanted to come back on here is uh, we mentioned about, you know, video for initial prospecting, but you then, you also mentioned that you use it at all the different points in your sales process. And I think that is something that a lot of people have overlooked. There may be some people who think, oh yeah, that, sending an initial video, that's a good idea. But then they stop there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then they're like, hey, that, you know, creative guy that, you know, stood out in the crowd from everybody else who's trying to get my attention. Uh, where, where did he go? <laughs> you know? And so that's, you know, something that's important when you're dealing with your prospects and building rapport and trust and relationships is consistency, right? Are you the same person that showed up in that really clever prospecting video, uh, that shows up on the discovery call or the demo call, um, or into the quarter, right? When you're trying to hit your number, are you the same person? Or are you more high pressure, you know, used car salesman type of person? <laughs> so consistency matters, right? So if you start the relationship off by video and that catches their attention to raise their hand and say, Hey, I'd love to chat with you. Um, you know, why would you change it up and not use that throughout the sales process? You know, um, people are busy. And yeah. frankly, they don't have time to read four paragraphs on, you know, all of your notes from discovery or explaining the proposal, you know, um, but here's what you can do. Here's a little hack. You know, sometimes it's like, well, I don't want to forget something, right. And I can gather my thoughts and I can write it down and I can review it and I can edit it and I can tweak it. Okay. Well do that. Go ahead and do that. And then that's your script for your video, mm. post discovery, after demo, proposal, you name it, you know? Um, so, you know, if, if personally, I would rather watch a 90 second or two minute video than read a four and a half paragraph email. So um, mm. just think about that, you know, and, 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 the re and the thing is, is think about this too. If, if, it, if this information needs to be shared amongst many stakeholders, it's a lot easier for them to share a link to a video than try to recap what it is that you were trying to tell them because they're always going to forget something. Yeah, and and the big email that you send with all the different directions and the attachments and the and the links and all of that. I mean, you know, the person who gets it's probably not going to go through it all. The people they, as you said, if there's other people involved, the people they forwarded to probably definitely aren't going to read all of it. So you're kind of shooting your shooting yourself in the foot there, because, and you're changing. The other thing I did, I did notice here is that you touched on there i think we also have to learn uh, you know how people want to communicate so if they react to the video fantastic like that's a great way of doing it i had an, i had an um an interesting one somebody told me recently they were coaching some sales people and they're out doing a, a ride along or something and the sales guy got a text from a prospect right who just asked him a simple question and immediately the guy picked up the phone and called him Mm -hmm. and and you know the conversation went okay uh, and then once he hung up the coach who was with him said he texted you why did you call him why didn't you text him back and say mm -hmm. Is it, can i call you he texted you because that's the way he wanted to communicate at that moment so why did you just pick up the phone he didn't ask you to do that you know so it's kind of getting out of sync with people yeah yeah exactly i mean it, and you see this too where you know some people like to dm on linkedin if that's their preferred method, then, you know, DM on LinkedIn, um, you know, and, and I think it's a, it's an important piece. Um, and, you know, if video didn't work for them, then you might need to try another approach and realize, Hey, video, um, didn't work. So then after discovery, after demo, after proposal, whatever, you're probably not going to send them a video. You're just going to maybe send them a nice, concise, you know, email. Um, because that could be the way that they prefer to consume information. So if you are doing, if you are doing videos, little videos, and they seem to be working for you, what are some, where can you take that? If you decided, okay, I, I seem to have hit on something. I seem to be pretty good at this. People react to me. What else could I do? So if you're using video throughout different stages of the sales process, um, 
what else? Uh, I don't think I understand the question. No, no, I'm just saying what if if I found that I was really good at it and it was and it was resonating. I mean, maybe I could take it a stage further. Maybe I could make little videos from for LinkedIn or something. I could make I could oh yeah, yeah. I could start to maybe increase my credibility a little bit. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. I, okay, I understand. Yeah, I mean, you could, uh, you know, become an actor, an actress, and be on the big screen. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's a few steps before that. Yeah, uh, yeah. My, yeah. my 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 son's and uh, my 17 year old son acts, and yeah, if only you were that easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, no, that's a great point. Um, yeah, I mean, if you start to get more comfortable on camera then you could start creating content, original content. I mean, sellers pretty much need to be marketers these days. Um, people are typically gonna check. I mean, if you're prospecting on LinkedIn, if you're building connections and relationships on LinkedIn, uh, you know, you should be posting content on a regular basis. And, you know, video is a great way, great, you know, great thing to add into your content mix um, so that people can start to, you know, build a little bit more trust and rapport with you just through consuming your content. Um, that's, that's a great thing to do. And sometimes you got to work your way up to that. Not everybody is comfortable doing that right away. And there's lots of tools that make this super easy. You don't need to be a, you know, fancy, um, creative and have a ton of editing skills to pull this off. I mean, you could use the same tools that you use to record videos and send it to prospects and, you know, run it in something like headliner or subtitle and then start posting content on LinkedIn on a regular basis as well. Yeah, no, and I think that's great because uh, let's face it, like as uh, salespeople, you always have so many different experiences and stories and situations that came up. Uh, you've got such a reservoir of great little snippets of insights that you could be sharing. As you said, like you could be making short videos and just saying, oh, an interesting thing happened with a customer the other day but i'd never seen this before blah 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 it might it may well resonate with uh with people from the same industry or whatever but you have you have a treasure trove i honestly think as a salesperson that you need to figure out how to use yeah and, and the and the thing is is you got to make sure one are you connecting with the right people because mm -hmm. if not then your content's falling on deaf ears <laughs> Right. Yes. And if you know, like most people, you know, most people have not been at the same job forever. So if they've had a few jobs, they might have a few different types of people in the network. And if there's actually people that no longer are relevant to you, you actually need to prune your network because it actually hurts you more than it helps you. Um, and what I mean is like, if you were in, I don't know, cybersecurity and now you're in SaaS sales and you sell to salespeople, um, that, that network of cybersecurity professionals that you built at that other job are no longer relevant and actually shouldn't be in your network anymore. And it's tough because everybody cares about that vanity metric, how many connections, how many followers, um, but it actually is going to hurt you way more than it's going to help you uh, to get reach to the people that should be hearing your message. And like you said, uh, John, which is a great point is you, you know, through just your job and having conversations with your prospects, you have lots of things to talk about. Just think of those as content ideas, jot them down. Maybe there's a, you know, story, make sure you make your customer the hero, not you, um, mm -hmm. because your prospects don't care about you winning president's club and crushing your quota and acting like a bro on LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was go those, those photos of hanging off the front of the boat and and president's club maybe not the best yeah. idea <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, listen uh, mm. listen colin this has been great listen time has flown all of colin's information is going to be below this video but before we go please do tell people a little bit more about you and salescast yeah so we're a revenue first podcast agency for anybody who wants to start a show guest on shows grow a show monetize a show uh, we also have a free podcast community, which you can find on our website as well. And then if you're looking for another podcast to check out, we drop five episodes a week on sales transformation. You can go to salestransformation.fm. Excellent. Listen, thanks again, Colin. And thank you all for watching and listening. Great insights. Go check it out. Uh, go check out SalesCast and go check out the podcast, Sales Transformation. Uh, all the vi all the information is going to be below the video, so you should no problem just clicking over to there. So thanks again, Colin. Thank you for watching and listening, and I'll see you all again very soon. Thank you.